Here are the top five underrated but awesome super bosses in D&D. One, Merit. Open up! It's the Dimension Police! Merit are really interesting. They're essentially enforcers of contracts forged in the Hall of Concordance, an embassy of pure law. Essentially, when two individuals sign a contract, it's this guy's job to enforce it, and it does that by kicking ass. Now, the Merit is an incredible superboss in the sense that it is terrifyingly inevitable. The stat block represents the unyielding precision of the machine itself. For example, when a Marit attacks someone, they take 60 force damage. No save, no dice rolled. 60 damage every time. And I mean no dice rolled. This always hits. When it blasts an area, everyone there takes 45 radiant damage. No dex save, the damage is just set. It just happens. This is terrifying as a player to see. You invest in high AC or impressive saves only to meet this unstoppable foe that just smashes straight through them. Now, there are still some saving throws involved because the Marut can stun people on a failed wisdom save and teleport people on a failed charisma save. But there's just no stat block in the game that feels quite like the inevitable Marut. And it serves as a great plot device too. Maybe your players made a deal with a demon and they finally managed to outsmart it and save the day. Well, before they start celebrating too much, have this bad boy teleport in and see how they deal with the legal ramifications of breaking a contract. Two. Yinogu. Forget Orcus and the Demogorgon. How could we not talk about the boy himself? Yinogu. Look at that smile. Look how happy he is to be killing people. Yinogu is like the end boss you fight when you get trapped in a furry sex dungeon. He is terrifying. He is insatiable. He is bondage dog. Seriously though, kinky chains and flail aside, Yinogu is awesome. He's all about fighting and hunting and killing. He's gonna charge up, get right in your face, and he's got the stat block to brawl. Bondage Dog makes three attacks per turn with his flail, dealing random effects like paralyzing or confusing on each hit. He can also pull out the Spiritual Weapon spell for an extra 4d8 plus 2 force damage each bonus action with a Spiritual Floating Flail. Then when he kills something, which he'll do a lot, he gets to run over to someone else and make an additional bite attack. But what I really like about Yinogu, aside from his infectious love of life and of death, is how adaptable he is. If you want a slightly easier Yinogu fight, just don't give him his flail. Now he's only got his bite attack and isn't quite so terrifying. This could be a great introduction for his savagery in a mid-game fight, where the party just barely survive his frenzy. Then end-game he comes back with his flail. Also, he's got another great feature. Inbuilt TPK protection. Yinogu loves murder, but he also loves the hunt. If you accidentally wipe them out, Yinogu doesn't kill them, he captures them and lets them loose in the Death Dells. This is a great hunting ground in the Abyss, where he pursues and slaughters prey in a twisted game. The party is beaten, they wake up in the Abyss and hear a trumpet sound. Gnolls, hyenas and twisted demons begin hunting them across the wasteland. Boom! You've got yourself an amazing escape arc, culminating in a rematch where the party can turn the tables on Yinogu. Now there's a good boy. And now a sketch, brought to you by World Anvil. Oh my god. What happened here? Douglas! <laughs> I'm creating a new campaign! <laughs> I must create! Like a goblin. A goblin called... Kylie! <laughs> yes! Yes! No! It's got to be original. Dude, this is insane. I mean, you're never going to be able to find anything without a proper world building system. This is just, it just falls apart. <gasps> but, but, but the post-it note, it's the most effective form of communication. Oh, for God's sake, just use World Anvil. Gee, World Anvil? What's that? World Anvil is the ultimate world building platform where you can create, organize, and share your world. It's got inbuilt interactive map making, stat block and character creation, a campaign manager to keep on top of everything, and a new auto linker for effortless editing and access to your old notes. It even has a timeline function to track the history of your world and create parallel timelines. For GMs who want to build immersive, complex, and tangible stories and worlds, it is the ultimate weapon. Get a 40% discount using code DDShorts by following the link below. 3. 
Niv Mizzet. Question, what's better than a dragon? Answer, a dragon that breaks the foundational balance of all spellcasting in D&D. Concentration. Niv Mizzet has a similar stat line to the ancient red dragon. AC 22, godlike stats, a little less hit points than 370, but some amazing abilities to make up for it. Resistance to all magical effects, advantage on con saves, plus 17 to con saves, and the ability to change the damage type of any of his spells on the fly. But best of all is his Locus of the Firemind, which lets him concentrate on two spells at once. This opens up so many crazy combos, it is nuts. He can do the Gravity Slam combo by himself, setting up a prismatic wall and making the party fall through it twice. This might sound crazy powerful, but it sort of should be. He's a CR 26 creature. However, I actually think Niv is a really beautifully designed encounter. None of his spells are really bullshit, it's all stuff the players have a chance at beating if they fight smart. His spellcasting makes him an ever-shifting puzzle of a fight, at one moment conjuring illusions, to controlling the battlefield with various wall spells, to just blasting away with fireballs and lightning bolts. Also, he's a dragon and can hit with a fire breath attack for 91 average damage in a 90 foot cone. Ultimately, he's just so much fun, both fighting against as a player and controlling as a DM. Also, remember you can use Niv Mizzet's stat block even if you don't want to use Niv Mizzet the character. And that's also a great point for the next entry. 4. Igwilv. You ever heard of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything? This is that woman, you guys! You can fight her! Did you know that? Igwilf, or Tasha, is a high-level spellcaster who has the spell Wish in her stat block. Now, Tasha is very famous in D&D lore, to the point where you're tying your story into a whole web of continuity if you choose to include her. But there's no reason why you can't transpose that stat block onto any powerful archfey if you want to challenge the party. Also, Tasha used to be pretty evil, and I'm fairly sure she fucked the demon lord Gradst. So, you know, if you want to play Tasha as your bad guy, there's definitely room there in her past. She has a lot of attacks that combine damage and control. Being able to charm two PCs per turn with her bewitching bolts, and possess a third using her legendary actions. She can also teleport around, fly, and summon demons to help her fight. This makes her impossible to pin down, and players are going to have to battle through various charm effects and occasionally fight each other during the encounter. This can be a ton of fun, and all that happens while they're getting blasted, polymorphed, and attacked by demons. What I really like about Tasha though is the fey flavor this stat block brings. If you want a stereotypical evil spellcaster, you can just use the Lich, but we've all seen the evil dead wizard thing before. Igwilv brings subtlety, charisma, and a real vibe to her battles, and style is everything in a good boss fight. Oh yeah, and also Wish. 5. The Elder Tempest The Elder Tempest is basically a living storm that is also a flying snake that is also just so stupid it is adorable. Seriously, this thing is stupider than a snail going by stats. But you don't need brains to be a great super boss. The Elder Tempest is powerful, a CR 23 gargantuan elemental with a fly speed of 120 feet. Also, it has flyby, meaning it's not provoking opportunity attacks, meaning it's going to be strafing across continents, obliterating everything it moves past. Oh, and by the way, it is always at the center of a storm at least five miles wide, meaning getting to it is nearly impossible, and the strong winds mean all ranged attack rolls are made with disadvantage. It can also use three legendary actions to Screaming Gale, releasing a blast of thunder and wind that is 20 foot wide and a fucking mile long. It's basically the day after tomorrow, the guy. One thing that makes a great boss is that its mere presence presents an exciting challenge. This thing destroys cities just by being nearby. It rains down thunder and tears across continents in a maelstrom of death and chaos. Players will have a hard time just trying to find it in that storm. They'll have a damn near impossible time trying to run away or catch up with it. Fighting it demands a mixture of clever thinking, incredible firepower, and blistering speed. A fittingly cinematic and epic cap to any adventurer's career. Check out the DM's Secret Weapon magazine released monthly on Patreon for puzzles, maps, and a full adventure every month, along with a ton of other awesome stuff. Link up here and also down there, and remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.